Welcome to an example on how to solve a system of three linear equations with three unknowns using a matrix equation. We'll be solving the system of equations shown here on the right. We begin by writing the system of equations as a matrix equation in the form of matrix A times vector X equals vector B, where matrix A is the coefficient matrix, vector X is a column matrix containing the variables X1, X2, and X3, and vector B is a column matrix containing the constants on the right side of the equation. Looking at the first equation, the first row of matrix A, the coefficient matrix, is two, two, and two. The second row from the second equation is one, one, three. And the third row from the third equation is one, four, one. So matrix A times vector X equals vector B from our system of equations is shown here below. Again, we have the coefficient matrix times vector X as a column matrix equals vector B as a column matrix. And now we need to solve this for vector x. To do this, let's look at the notation shown here in red. Notice in red I'm using matrix notation instead of vector notation, but it is equivalent. So to solve the matrix equation, we need to solve for matrix x. To do this, we multiply both sides of the equation by a inverse. On the left, a inverse times a is equal to i, the identity matrix, and i times x equals x, giving us x equals a inverse times b a inverse times b, or a inverse times vector b, will give us the solution to the system. So going back to our matrix equation, we now know vector x is equal to a inverse times vector b, which is equal to this three by one column matrix. Let's verify this using the Desmos calculator, and then we'll talk about how we would do this by hand. To save some time, I've already entered matrix a and matrix b. I've also found a inverse, but we don't need this for doing this using technology. We simply go down to the next available cell and enter A inverse times B, and we have the result on the right, which indicates that X1 equals negative four, X2 equals three, and X3 equals two. And now let's talk about how we would do this by hand. We know to find the solution, we need to find A inverse times B, where A inverse is the inverse of the coefficient matrix. If we were doing this by hand, we would set up an augmented matrix where we have the coefficient matrix on the left and the three by three identity matrix on the right. Then we perform row operations so that we have the identity matrix on the left and whatever three by three matrix is on the right is A inverse. We can also find this using the matrix calculator. To do this, I've already entered the augmented matrix in matrix C, where again we have the coefficient matrix on the left and the three by three identity matrix on the right. If we write matrix C in reduced row echelon form, we will have the three by three identity matrix on the left and A inverse will be on the right. So if we go down to the next available cell and enter RREF matrix C and then click the convert to fraction button on the right side, we do have A inverse. Notice how this is the same as the A inverse above. So whether we find A inverse by hand or with technology, we now know to find the solution, we need to determine A inverse times B, or A inverse times vector B, which would be this product here, which you may want to pause the video and verify. We do get the three by one matrix shown here on the right, once again indicating X1 equals negative four, X2 equals three, and X3 equals two. Because we have one solution, the system is consistent and independent. There is an important consideration when trying to solve a system of linear equations using a matrix equation. A matrix equation can only be used to solve a system of linear equations when A, the coefficient matrix, is invertible, meaning when it has an inverse, which should make sense. We can't find A inverse times B if A inverse doesn't exist. If the system of equations has no solution or infinite solutions, matrix A will not be invertible. Therefore, if A is not invertible, then another method will need to be used to determine if the system has no solution or infinite solutions. Also recall A is not invertible if the determinant of A equals zero. So let's take a look at two quick examples. Let's say we have the system X1 plus X2 equals one and X1 plus X2 equals two. We should recognize this system will have no solution because there's no way the sum can be equal to one and also be equal to two. Notice the coefficient matrix is the two by two matrix where all entries are one and the determinant is equal to zero. So again, in this case, A is not invertible, meaning A inverse does not exist. 
so we cannot determine the system has no solution using a matrix equation. The other case is if we have an infinite number of solutions. So if we consider the system x1 plus x2 equals one and two x1 plus two x2 equals two, notice the second equation is just the first equation multiplied by two and therefore there's an infinite number of solutions. If we didn't recognize this, notice the coefficient matrix is one, one, two, two and once again the determinant is equal to zero so we could not determine A inverse times B. We'd have to use another method to determine the system has infinite solutions. I hope you found this helpful.